classic Terran versus Zerg matchup, in my opinion, the matchup that like typifies what StarCraft is all about. And to start off our introductions, spawning in the bottom right-hand corner, representing 440 Gaming, he's from Brazil, he's yellow, it's Lullaby. Bum, bum, bum. And in the top left position, in the green, in the Zerg, from 440 Gaming as well, we have the giant gnome. <clears throat> so, in my opinion, back a long ways, you've got a, a pretty far spawn distance. The map itself tends to lend itself towards macro play more so, uh, towards early rushes or things like that, because it's got a pretty defendable second, depending on what you've uh, like what your what your build order is, obviously. But for me, as a Terran, I always like to go and start. Um, CC first, but we've got a Reaper, um, or rather a uh, Barracks coming out early on. Yeah, I'd like to agree with that CC first. Honestly, this is a really good map for Terran to be able to do that. Um, although, with that said, I do like what Zerg's doing. He's sending his drone scout at a really early time. He's going to be able to come across here. He's going to be able to see what the, Zer uh, the Terran Ooh. opponent's doing. And he's going to get in here and scout everything. Yeah, so he sees the, the gas and the, the racks. Nothing, you know, too crazy. Um, and he goes actually hatch first instead of uh, spawning full first, which is obviously, you know, it's not going to be a too huge, it's not too game changing in the end, but uh, we'll see what um, Lullaby's lullaby, lullaby, lullaby got coming out for us. And then the pool does go down for, for the Zerg play on the top left there. Orbital going to start, Reaper's going to start as well, so he's going to try and do a little bit of harassment here. Um, hatch first, I think, is always the best decision on this map in particular, unless, like I said, you scout and you see your opponent go CC first. And then you can do a, a pull first, but you can only do so much damage with that, I feel. Man, if you get if you get a Reaper to get a kill or two on a Masters player, I feel like that's that's a that's a victory in and of itself. Like Reapers should are you know, they're really like obviously they've got little guns and they can shoot things. But if you get a drone kill or something, that's a, that's already a victory in and of itself. And it's it's funny that Lullaby is sending an S C V to scout as well. I don't know if he thinks something's up or not, but the, the double scout to me is a little funny when you've got a Reaper coming on the way. I think that's a good decision, though. Um, a fast SCV will just go ahead and verify everything's going normal for the Zerg. Make sure he isn't doing like anything too cheeky um, right off the bat. And it'll also kind of put the Zerg off. He's like, because most Zerg are used to you, you uh, scouting with a Reaper. So if you don't, or if you do scout with an SCV, he might not necessarily expect the Reaper right away. And the Reaper rise. He does have four Zerglings out, though, so he's going to be in a good position to be able to push it back. So if, he, if you show up with an SCV and your Reaper, right, and you've gone three hatch... Are the alarm bells ringing? Mm, more or less. For the Terran player, I would I would be not too concerned. I would just be like, well, I can you know aggress this or I can do whatever. Um, it depends how the I guess it depends how the Terran reacts. I would yeah. say. Ooh, that's really gonna go ahead and get out. Um, that spore caller just was to save the drone. It was of it was course, like yeah. five health. Yeah, of course. But I mean, it was really quick. It was close to getting oh, the last okay. shot off, and Perfect. he was able to to save it. That was really neat. CC coming down for our Terran player. Two CCs coming down for our Terran player. Going to yeah, fast. Uh, one on the natural and then one he's building in his base. And uh, going to go into double Hellion um, production. He's got two Reapers now, um, which is like substantially uh, stronger. You can get uh, drawn off in essentially three shots at that point because it would mm -hmm. otherwise take you, you know, six. And, yeah. uh, sorry, go ahead. And it definitely presses into these lings pretty hard too. Um, the lings, can, you know, against one reaper, lings can more or less zone it out. But once you have two reapers, the queens really need to be in a good position as well, um, which kind of puts the zerg into a pretty heavy situation of where they need to be constantly focusing on their micro as well as their macro. Yeah, speed's going to finish up um, for the zerg player, and he hasn't taken a third yet, but he does have those lings running around now with their little wings on them, giving them that extra burst of speed, zooming around looking for that those two reapers. And uh, if you can pick up those reapers. That dude, it's a uh, as a Terran. If you just go back to macro for a little bit and lose your Reapers, that's the biggest fucking headache in the world. And uh, it's it's a it's really big for the next push. You know, when you push with Hellions and and the Reapers really make a big difference because typically you keep them out in front of your Hellions, let the Queens uh, target your Reapers, and of course the Reapers heal back so you can pull them back and and, and uh, keep them alive for longer. So yeah, losing, absolutely losing the. Um, but we don't have Hellions coming out, actually, so we have, we have Marines on that reactor, and now he's going to be switching out a siege tank to give him that extra little defensive uh, pressure. Now, the interesting thing that I saw the Zerg do here is he did go for a Roach Warren. 
Um, he did do. A, he's going to do a little bit of a timing with a roach push, roach push, followed up by some lings here. Probably an expectation that Hellions are coming out, but this is going to be a siege tank, so the hold's going to be a little bit easier Ooh. for the turn. See, this is the first thing we were talking about. They're from 440 Gaming. They know each other. Do you think that yep. siege tank was a bit of metagame? Because I, I thought, okay, I think the roaches. The racks. I, I think, think the, the roaches, roaches first were the metagame. And he's like, I know you're going to go Hellion. And then the Terran was like, I know you're going to go oh, Roaches because you know I'm going to go Hellions. Meta, yeah. meta, metaception. It was like a triple metagame on each other. Exactly. This is some deep philosophical fucking StarCraft going down, boys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's got the wall up. So, you know, I think Lullaby at this point in time is, is safe. I don't, you know, unless we've got massive, um, you know, there's no bailing nest. So there's no bust coming with this uh, Roach push as well. One Siege Tank is... is uh, you know, it's it's away from the roach range. They're not going to really get up there on that ramp and be able to target down the siege tank. Mm. Um, so I think if the roaches were to push out right now, which they don't seem to be doing, he'd be able to help, uh, hold it fine, especially with the two widow mines there. Yeah. If the widow mines weren't there, the only way this push would go or the push would go well for the zerg is if that overlord noticed the siege tank was there. The roaches went on the low ground and then lings ran up under the high ground, so the roaches could hit it. Um, but besides that, turns in like a great in a great position, like you were saying. So zerg is going to go ahead and take his third base. Get up his evolution chambers and start going into his macro mode. It's going to be two armories coming down for the Terran player. Are we going to see uh, mech? Mech. We're seeing mech. Perfect. We're seeing mech. And uh, I think this is a, a pretty good response. Um, he hasn't gotten any sort of uh, upgrades on this tech lab from his barracks. Um, and he didn't produce any any marauders. So this this to me, he's sending out his four widow mines and a drop there on the left side of the map. But to me, I think uh, he has kind of read his Zerg opponent pretty well. Yeah, Even definitely. though he hasn't really scouted, right? He, he, I think it's all metagame at this point. More or less, yeah. So Widow Mine's going to go ahead and get in here, and Zerg hasn't quite reacted yet. One Widow Mine's going to go down, second Widow Mine's going to go it. down. Oh, he just pulls in time. It's one. Two kills. I'll do bad. And he's got two going up into the main as well. Zerg's going to do a little bit of damage over here to the third, and the Widow Mine's are going to drop here too, but again... Zerg's gonna go ahead and pull them out. So he's in yeah, this is pretty good. good. Roaches, Roaches on the on the lower command center on the third, and then uh, the widow mine harass going up in the top. So um, pretty good for both players pushing at the same time to harass each other's expansions. It's uh, you know, you don't see it that often, but it's pretty nifty. All the all the widow mines are alive, by the way. He kept them all alive. Perfect. And Lair's already done, so he's gonna go ahead and get overseer, try and get a little bit of these uh, widow mines out of the way, so that he can bring his workers back to the <laughs> mineral lines. This is quite a bit of a delay on these these mineral lines both mineral lines were delayed for a good 30 seconds maybe 20 do you, seconds do you see what the zerg player did to the third did he giant Nub, okay so lola uh, lifted his third command center and then and, and did. giant Nub already had the overlord there and he yep. threw down to creep side. that is the most Perfect. annoying thing in the world and it takes a long time to get rid of the creep too so yeah it's a good um, play and we do have the widow mines still there oh are they gonna get a bunch of kills the widow mines at the natural oh my god oh wow eight, eight kills, kills. Holy cow, that's so satisfying. And you know that's a pain for the Zerg because more links coming in. I, I bet you that other Widow Mine's going to target now. And he's got 11 kills got too. Got another worker kill. No, two more worker kills. Not bad. So these Widow Mine's pretty much paid for themselves. He's still got one over there, I believe, alive with the medevac and a second drop coming in as well. This time the drop's going to contain... Uh, Elbats. Elbats. Mm. All right. This is the only thing that I disagree with about this with is that when you load Hellions, you can hold, load five Hellions. So you can load them, unload four, or I mean four. Sorry, you can unload four and then turn them into Hellbats, and you get that much more DPS. Yeah, and to me, I think I agree with you in that respect because you say, oh, but you can't pick up, you know, four hell, uh, Hellbats with the uh, Medivac. But right. it's really it's two hundred mineral investment, and if you you know, there's no gas involved unless you lose right. the Medivac, which you really shouldn't, and a, a pretty safe drop at that point in time. So. Um, at that, you know, at that point, it's like I'm going to sacrifice 200 minerals to potentially, absolutely ravage a mineral line. Yeah, like, hell yeah, I'll, I'll bring in four hellbats. That'll kill, yep. you know, a queen in a heartbeat. And then these next two are going to, these next two need to be microed a little bit. They're trying to take out the hatchery there. Second one going into the natural as well, and he's got one uh, meta back over there, ready to drop into the main when he wants to. And there it goes into the main. The hellbats at the natural get shut down, but at the main, they're going to go ahead and get dropped in, do some damage up there as well. Look at him focusing this queen. He needs to micro them, make sure they're doing damage to the drones. He needs to take advantage of the fact that he has total air superiority right now. This is really good play from the Terran. And to be fair, when you're up against Roach, a lot of Terrans are like, well, how do I beat Roach? You can't necessarily engage, especially when they get Hydralisks in the game, because that's what I'm just assuming is going to be the next move. Uh, you can't really engage an army 
of Hydralisk Roach unless you're like full out upgraded up mech and that's really difficult to, to maintain that against a, a good Zerg who can spread his creep and get his macro going. So um, taking advantage of the immobility of the army is really what you want to do. And if you look back at home, the Terran player has done like he's been perfectly fine getting his, his, uh, his macro up and running. He's got fully saturated mineral lines uh, except for the first. He actually uh, only has eight workers mining minerals there but minerals aren't necessarily the biggest issue when it comes to playing uh, a, a sort of gas heavy build uh it, you know it's the gas that you're looking for right absolutely and those those drops four drops all together four widow mines six hellbats did 32 worker kills and that's huge for the, the terran player he's got I mean, three bases look at the look a, at the supply he's in an amazing position yeah 150 supply to 100 <laughs> supply and the 100 supply belongs to the zerg that's not a position you want to be in yeah i feel like uh <laughs> As a, you know, even as a Terran, if I'm behind in supply, you know, obviously you don't see the numbers up in game, but you you have a general feel for the situation. I still feel okay because you've got the the micro oriented units. You can right. you know split for days and and uh, medevacs do wonders. Of course, your meals, meals can really help. Course. You know, make up the difference. Right, and uh, you know, there's only so much injects can do <laughs> in terms yeah. of turning out larvae. This is a really scary army, though. I mean, what's the response for Zerg? You basically have no. Uh, mineral lines left over because you know he has to resaturate all he's using all his larvae to resaturate and resaturate so his army has really suffered because of this mm -hmm. he does have an upgrade advantage but roaches against mech and it's really not I mean it's not a situation you want to be in like even against an even army or even an army that's a little bit less than you as zerg it's still a hard thing because your units are so cost inefficient but an army that's twice your your value 132 army supply or value to 84 army value for the Zerg. That's just not something you want to uh, really fight against. Yeah, and, and at this point, like the ball is certainly in Giant Gnome's court. Lullaby has committed enough damage early on, where now Giant Gnome he has to make a play, whether it's you know on the mineral line or something. He can't engage his army straight up. I mean, mm -hmm. he doesn't have a lot of tanks now. He does have five tanks, but. He's going to lose this battle if he tries to engage. It's not going to work out for him. Yeah, this is absolutely not the right decision. I mean, honestly, I can't say what the right decision right now is for the Zerg, if there is one. Um, but Terran putting the pressure on... A Roach counterattack seems uh. to be what Giant Gnome is going for. <laughs> He's going to sacrifice his fourth and go for it. See if he can do it, though. He this, needs to this do is a the lot play, of this damage. Is play, this is the play he needs to make, and he's going to catch all these SCVs out because they can't... This is it. This is the play he needs to make. If these sieges, these siege tanks are on siege and he comes up the ramp, he's going to be able to do damage. He might be able to get away with this because that mech army might be slow and going. Is he going to press the advantage here? Oh, he's going to take out the orbital. He's sniping the orbital. Oh, wow. This, yeah, this is exactly what we're talking about. Giant No might come back from a play like this. Right? This is what he needs, but the, the I mean, <laughs> the only issue is is that Terran is still over in his in his base, and there's yeah. three siege tanks at the main ramp of uh, the Terran's base. Okay. So Terran's gonna go ahead and push into this, try and do a little bit of damage here. He's gonna go over to the third, split some Thors into the natural as well, and uh, walk in here, see if he can do any damage here. Zerg's doing net pretty good damage to the natural to Terran down there, but um, those tanks have been doing good amount of work. Finally, that last tank goes down, but two more have already finished up. Roaches are getting surrounded by the SCVs, and down they go. His counterattack is there over, it is. and there's GG. <laughs>
uh, you know, spawning distances, the general lay outlay of the of the map. Uh, we actually already have some craziness going down with the so proxy racks. So here we have a scouted proxy racks. Yeah, it's, it's scouted proxy racks because the Overlord is going to get sent right over uh, to that base, and so he sees it. Um, and we're response, already getting into the action. <laughs> in response, a very fast spawning pool. And he's already got gas, too. And he's yes. Had gas. And he's going he's to get a second gas already. We have proxy reaper. Mm. Oh, no, he canceled to uh, to free up some supply for two more drones. He's actually got Zergs morphing out of his cocoon, so it is a Reaper, and he's gonna actually rally it back to his base with a bunker. So this was a this was actually kind of a a fake, wasn't it? Well, it was meant to be aggression, but you know he knew it was scouted because the drone was the drone was there, kind of circling the the racks. So okay, I look, I might be a baby Terran, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do, okay. Maybe he's producing a second Reaper. He'll be able to defend the racks for sure. I disagree. I think he meant I think he meant for this to get scouted because. He knows that the Overlord is going to be going that way, right? Like, right. you assume that. Well, the Overlord should be going to your natural. So if he wanted oh, okay. to make sure it was scouted, he would go to the second Zelnaga. See, that's the type of Zerg shit that I don't put up with. Right. Going to the natural. You scout, scout, the, scout the main. Why don't you guys... You just put it over the little... The thing where I can't shoot it with yep. my Marines. Yeah, and then you have to, like, lift a building to get to it. To get it, yeah. I, yeah. It's so tempting, and sometimes I do it, and then, by the way, Ling's run by my barracks wall. Right, exactly. It's what we it's what we wait for. Okay, well, I'm going to keep with the... Oh, that's around. Oh, not quite as around. didn't get it. It was close. The second Reaper helped out there, in my, I think. He's trying to get those Lings off the, the Zelnaga. Zelnagas are really important, and I feel like a lot of uh, lower-level to mid-level guys um, underestimate their importance, but map vision is super key. Uh, for for determining any 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 stage of the game, and so Zelnaga towers. If you can, I mean, if you're the type of person who unfortunately uses the select all army key a lot, I know I'm I'm a definite victim of that. Um, but if you use the select all army key a lot, and you're taking your marines or, or you know zealots or what have you away from the Zelnaga towers, send to an idle worker there or something like that. Super yeah, important. One reaper does go down. One reaper survives. Uh, if these lings notice, he might be able to come back on the reaper pretty easily and kill it off. But he's gonna go ahead and just run across, try and scout it. Oh, he sees it. It's his. It's his. He's gonna get this round. Oh no! Well, is is he gonna get it? He's gonna hop. Yeah, this. he'll no, get he's it. Done. He he's can't done. hop he's it. Dead. Yeah. Oh, in mid. Now, okay, mid that hop. that that doesn't seem fair. That Reaper was clearly in the air. In the air, right? But it's cinematic to me to see a dead guy just True. jetpack hurdle. Yeah. Mm. So we do have a, a command center going on back home, and uh, he's not gonna go to third CC. He's actually gonna get a starport. Uh, fairly early, and that's a, the bit of the sacrifice you make. And now he puts his factory down um, on his on his reactor. So did yeah, the Zerg player saw that. So the Zerg is uh, prepared, or, or you know already prepared. He's got speed things um, for any sort of early aggression, and he's got lings there waiting at the top of the natural ramp to make sure that any shenanigans don't go down uh, by way of Hellions. Yeah, and he's got a he's got a decent window before he can start up his spore to try and deny this uh, banshee play here. Uh, Viking's going to come out, of course, first, do a little bit of damage to the Overlord, and most likely he'll transfer the attack lab over. Oh, actually, you know what? He started his stim pack, so that's an absolute lie. <laughs> I feel like I feel like banshee play would have been actually a smart decision. There's a lot of um, area for you to zip around with with your banshee on overgrowth, and not much air defense by waves. Uh, you know, queen action in spores right now, and if you know if it had been scouted, uh, you know we do have a tech lab going down on it now, so we, we're probably still going to see banshees. It just he turned a little out bit later than I would like. Yeah, he he went for the early stem, which gives you a little bit of extra weight versus roaches, uh, mm -hmm. because if you get the banshee out anyway, what what you're really doing is you're is you're saying I'm going to wait. Cloak is going to take a long time because banshees tend to you know they're not they don't take that long. Cloak is really the you know, 110 second um, investment. So he's right. saying, I want, I want Stim to deal with any sort of early roach aggression. That's, I think that's what he's, he's uh, going for there. Right. No roaches though. We do have a fairly standard macro, uh, and he goes for melee attacks. So, do you think he's going to transition into roaches anytime soon? I don't think so. I don't think there's really that much use to it. 
We do have the third CC uh, forming part of the wall at the natural of Lullaby, and he's got a bunch of Hellions sitting behind there. Uh, he's got a lot of Hellions, actually. Um, how many is that? Nine, nine Hellions in total, and he's going to go ahead and repair uh, the, the injured ones and probably go out on the map trying to deny creep, maybe snipe some drones, that sort of thing. Um, and I do want to talk about uh, watching Challenger League. I think for us, there's never been a really a better time to be a StarCraft fan because there's so much content and... The Ascended StarCraft League is just one of those, you know, we're, we're one of those guys who are, who are showing you up-and-comers. Uh, you're getting your, your dose of limelight. So if you do, like, once again, like us, follow, subscribe, donate, all that good stuff. We do have a Patreon. Um, and you were talking about Hearthstone later, and I know <laughs> StarCraft 2 players, we're, really hard, we're harder on each other than we are on anyone else. But even if you're just platinum in this game, that's a substantial amount of time dedicated to get to that level of lovability. This is a difficult game. Yes, definitely. And I feel like we're, you know, we're kind of jerking ourselves off here, but like, it's, I feel amazing when I'm playing this game and my friends are like, oh my god, he's so fast. And they come in and they're like, how is he so fast on the keyboard? He's just such, he's so quick. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's absolutely a thing that I'm going to do when I have grandchildren. I'm going to subcon, like, secretly <laughs> teach them about StarCraft and never let them know that I'm amazing at it. <laughs> until they're like 14 and then they're gonna be like I'm so good at this game and then I'm gonna be like wrecked son and you're gonna just destroy them <laughs> exactly you, you're just gonna six pull them and then you mad them yeah, yeah. get back to the game though <laughs> plus one plus one just finishing up for a zerg there's a ling run by counter to hellion harass here he's gonna have to pull drones off that third and he's gonna find a closed wall he might break through the supply depots if the terran player is not quick enough to pull scvs and repair and he's actually gonna do that right now probably put those scvs on auto repair and the hellions are actually getting a substantial amount of work because they're aided by that cloaked banshee uh which we call that oh my god so many hellions roasting up these these drone kills oh my goodness 13 kills on that guy five on that one seven on that one and he finally takes out the last of them uh and the lings are are they gonna be able to snipe this orbital he saw it too late he's gonna snipe the orbital the orbital goes down nice. that's a huge that's a that huge is pickup. huge so actually in terms of you know in terms of supply giant gnome definitely uh at a disadvantage and the lings did pick up the orbital um but lullaby really got the benefit of killing a shit ton of drones uh, but unfortunately, he's a bit of a supply block right now, after losing that orbital, and he goes ahead and throws down four supply depots. And you never really want to be supply is one of those things you always want to be ahead of. You always want to be like right as you're edging towards your supply, that supply depot finishes, or that pylon finishes, or that overlord comes out, and yeah. uh, it sets you off because a lot of times, you know, you're, you're you've got your build, you've got your timing set out, and the simplest thing like a supply block is just like so rage inducing. It, it's almost game ending sometimes. Definitely, especially if you're one of those big ones where you're like, I need to produce 40 roaches right now. <laughs> so we do have typical Ling Bane Muta LMB versus um, Widow Mine Marine. And we're going to really see creep spread versus Marine splitting is really what this matchup comes down to. We do have some decent splits going down. Mines go down and not really decent hits. And then Bane's come up and clean this up. The Metavax might get sniped by these mutas. How many mutas do we have right now? Five mutas. So not enough to really shut down the, the big gas units, but that was a really good pickup from the Zerg player, shutting down that uh, push. So how do you see this game panning out? Right now, I, th I favor Zerg. Um, he's got a huge bank, so like even though you're sure he's not spending that, as soon as he notices that, as soon as he's able to spend that, I think things are going to go pretty well in his favor. And it all really came down to taking that um, orbital command, because sure, those Hellions got a full mineral line of uh, workers. What was it, 16, 17 workers that he got, got killed? A, a fuck ton. That's the mineral yeah, that we're going to go with. But getting an orbital is really large for the Zerg player. Um, a single mule is worth six, seven workers or so. So that right there is basically, you know, halfway caught up to that. Getting the orbital itself means it can't produce. He can't take a third base until, you know, his his the next one he replaces it with is up. He's got creep over the third base already, so it's going to delay it even further. So he's doing an amazing job. This is 16 minutes into the game, and Terran doesn't have a third. Yeah, not the best position. <laughs> As your resident Terran commentator. But, um... The one thing that Giant Omen 2 has, has capitalized on is put the creep down at the... We were talking about that earlier, how annoying that is and how long it takes to, to spread out. So uh, everything you know he's done in his power, essentially, to go ahead and deny that expansion. Although he's... You know, 
Okay, we're watching it in real time, and the creep is, is dissipating pretty quickly. But when you're playing and you're looking at your CC and you're like, why well, won't so it land? It's so frustrating. It takes forever, and you just want to play. like, this something. has been a year now. <laughs> I've grown a beard. <laughs> And uh, uh, he is actually going to be able to plant his third, and he's going to throw. He's mutilus is going to go in here. Is there widow mine there anymore? No, the no, widow mine actually vacated the location, so he's, these widow or these mutas are going to be able to do quite a bit of damage. The SCV transfer going to get a few of them before the marines come over, and Terran's going to go ahead and take an engage up there. But let's see how the engage goes for him. The banelians just completely crush his army. He gets no pickups, and Terran's army is gone. All he okay. has is medivacs right now. So while you were watching that whole shindig go down, I was watching the mutas that were just. Chilling over the third CC of the Terran player, and he lost a lot. He lost quite a bit of mutas, but this is definitely uh, Terran, uh, rather Zerg favor as the Lings and mutas and Banelings come in off creep. He doesn't care. He's got a bigger, bigger army. I think he's in a really good position. Terran gonna have to lift the third and vacate. Third out. Two widow mines oh. go off. Another couple two are gonna go ahead and burrow, but the Lings are gonna bait the shots on. Oh, that both was them, really like. well done. It doesn't. That was really well done. He left two lings there, and they only baited one. But mm -hmm. in terms of what you and know, as a Zerg player, player, yeah. Oh, he took it out. Holy yep. cow! Yeah. Oh my god. Almost game ending. Jesus. Oh, what am I going shot. off on? Uh, on an observer, not the best thing. What you want it to be doing? Yeah. You really want those widow mines to be hitting, hitting, you know, mutilisks because the mutilisk is, the, you know, as opposed to banelings, is the gas heavy unit of your comp, and so. I'm, I I don't know. How do you feel about if you if you see a, a overseer get hit by a, a widow mine, you don't you don't really sweat that too much, not, do you? Yeah, all. don't care. It's we do have a push. Fifty minerals, fifty gas, not a big deal. Yeah, to me, These this Marines is like, going to come in. Oh, but, oh there's God. nothing, not oh. a chance. GG. GG. Oh. Four forty gaming versus four forty gaming. We've got spawning in the bottom right corner, hailing all the way from sunny Brazil. It is your red Terran, who just lost the game, tied the series one one lullaby. And in the upper left position, in the green, in the Zerg from. 440 Gaming also, the ace match between these two players, it's going to be our player, the Giant Gnome. And Giant Gnome sending out a quick drone scout, going to get all the information he needs to see that it's not a CC first, and indeed, uh, Refinery uh, taken at 12, and Rex put down at 12 as well. Um, so the first game we saw in Aqualon Waste between these two players, it seemed like Lullaby kind of guessed what was going on a little early on. Seemed like he knew where Giant Gnome was going uh, into Roach play and was able to counter it with some just pretty standard mech play, able to keep his uh, third up and running long enough to exploit the gas income. And then the second one on Overgrowth, <laughs> we saw basically Giant Gnome totally re reverse fortunes, um, spotted a Rax that I still will think was purposefully meant to be spotted. And my, my co-caster will, will disagree with me on that. But... <laughs> He was able to take that game two, um, I think, more convincingly than Lullaby was able to take game one. Yeah, definitely. And it wasn't because, you know, game one, Lullaby doing his drop harassment, doing all that crazy, you know, zip around, act along ways, really exploiting the map. That's one thing. But to me, the second game was more, it was more standard play. It was more like, uh, a, a, you know, a typical Terran versus Eric play. And that's why, that's why I say that, you know, it might have actually gone more in favor the first game to Lullaby than the second game went to the Zerg player. But I think the first game might have been a little, I don't want to say fluky because it was definitely a solid win, but I think it might have been more based on, uh, you know, star sense than it was on any sort of uh, fundamental difference in skill or, or things like that. Yeah, definitely. Zerg player is very worried about Reaper openings here. He's always producing, seems to be producing um, six ling lings quite frequently, at least the last game, too. Um... I mean, does that is that really too much of an investment? Like it, it is. How much does that slow you down in the early game? Not too much, but I mean, it is a drone. Comes to about forty minerals for a minute, and if you're if you're down the drone, I don't know, works out to about forty minerals. And I don't think you know a reaper. If you control your your drones long enough until your queens get out, you mm -hmm. might lose you know one or two drones. So it almost right. it almost cancels itself out. Right. Of course, lings do give you the the option to go ahead and take map control and, and 
and things of that nature later on, though. Oh, yeah, you should always get at least two um, two lings, you know, or a single set of lings, as it were. Um, I often get two, but I think three is just put, pushing it a little bit much. And you know what? Who are we to disagree with the style, man? It's been, it worked for him last, last yeah, game, definitely. you know, really well, so... He knows his opponent better than we know him. That's that's for sure. And it's definitely handy against opponents that commonly open two reapers. You know, after the second reaper, because you already have the lings out. You're droning behind it. You're comfortable with that. You don't have to produce more and wait for them to come out. Yep, he's not going to go ahead and, and send out the second reaper. Although he did open on Akalong a waste with the second reaper. He's going to transfer into uh, that factory onto a reactor, and he's going to get double Hellion production up and running. And as opposed to taking the, the third CC, uh, he's doing the same thing he did on Overgrowth, where he's going to get the early start port and probably merge in, into uh, to Banshee player, maybe some early drops. So Ohana, another map of the Dream Pool, uh, an old map. I think this map was in the map pool when I first started playing, so like August 2013, uh, a long time ago for, for StarCraft careers. Um, but I think this is me speaking out of my ass here. This is definitely a Zerg favorite map. Uh, I would agree. I, I, I hear that a lot, and I also know when I play it, I feel like I'm dominating everything, so I'm going to say that's true. I feel like that all the time true. anyway. Just or I, uh, of course, you know. 100% win ratio. I'm the American Tasia, if you didn't know. True. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's a lot of open space. How much of that do you think actually comes into more of a self-fulfilling prophecy? Because I feel like there's a lot... Big supply block going on from, from Giant Home, by the way. But in terms of talking about maps, I feel like a lot of players... Say, oh, that map is really, uh, you know, Zerg favored, or it's really Protoss favored. How much of that is truth, and how much do you think comes down to just Zerg, uh, you know, players convincing themselves that a map might not be so favorable? I think it's a lot of the time convincing. You know, I don't think necessarily any map can be too crazy centric, favored towards one particular race. There are definite um, situations where, like, for instance, why people consider this map is, like you said, the big open spaces. Zerg love getting surrounded, but that's really it. There's a lot of maps that kind of favor Terran in a way, like, but but the reason they favor them is, like, you have a ramp right next to your, or, like, some kind of ledge right next to a natural that you can put tanks on. It's a lot more cheeky of a way that it uh, favors the Terran. So this is a really big drop coming. I know we've been talking about something else, trying to build Full it up. But he's got, uh, he's got a, yeah, he's got a um, armory, and he's going to go ahead and, and transform those guys with the healing medevac and marine supporting. The lings are going to come around from the back. Hellbats do tend to do a really, really good job, but the queens, oh, the queens transfuse and then snipe the medevac. That was big. So now we've just yep. got four Hellbats that are going to swallow it up. So that was a really, really good defense, and he was able to smell it out really well. Um, yeah. Pull the links just in time to get the Marines, and uh, all doesn't, his queens survived, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, doesn't even lose a queen. Perfect hold there by the uh, Zerg player. Yeah, you will trade links for medevacs all day <laughs> in terms of uh, in terms of early game to mid game pushes. Speaking of trading links for medevacs, when they first leaked that noise of one of the Zerg units for Legacy of the Void, I was like, please let Infestors launch Bane lanes into the sky. Oh God! No. <laughs> Speaking of bane lanes, oh, okay. bane lane nest. <laughs> oh, we do. Have bane lane. We have a yeah, bane lane nest inspired. You know, typical of uh, of last game. So he's not going roach. I think he he might have learned his lesson from the first game of going into that sort of play. Uh, Lullaby does have a a banshee coming out, and then uh, he's producing a second banshee. And here's one thing that I do think is important. The first game, he only produced one banshee, if I recall correctly. If I'm wrong, I'm going to get destroyed on on Twitch chat, but. Uh, he, uh, I'm pretty sure he only produced one Banshee. If you're Terran and you're going to go ahead and get Cloak, uh, you might as well get your money's worth out of that and produce two Banshees. You know, 100 gas, 100 minerals. Definitely. You know, that's it. That's stim earlier than it should have been, or you know, later than it should have been. He is going to get these Hellions in on this mineral line, and the, the debris hasn't been, the rocks haven't been taken down. He's going to get all of these drones, oh, isn't he? Drones. Poor, poor drones. And you got to remember, those can turn into Hellbats, too. 13 work kills isn't so huge, but he's going to be able to shut oh, down these turn, lings. Oh, he's turning them right into Hellbats. He can target the hatchery. He might be able to take out the hatchery. Yeah, he can take out the hatchery. The queens are nowhere to be seen right now. I know the math on this, the panic, when you're like, all I have are he's lings. Not getting it. He's, he's going to get the hatchery. The queens aren't going to go over it in time at all. He's going to get the hatchery. This might be, this is like game ending. I wouldn't say necessarily game ending. Terran doesn't actually have uh too much of his own. He's just finishing up the third. Well, I mean, in terms of orbital, he does have the third orbital. But he's going into mech, um, and I guess Zerg hasn't really scouted that yet. Or the spire is, is a big deal here. So what it's going to come down to is um, whether or not we can get. So we have two Thors coming out, right? So 
actually this fire the mutas all pop out right now so th right. this is perfectly planned and look he's throwing down turrets back in his main right. so this is actually kind of perfectly guessed of course the switch to muta is incoming right mm -hmm. but um these turrets are going to pop out just in time to deal with these mutas he does have them rallied to his natural and they will take a time to get up into the main but right you know, I think uh, the the savior here was going to be Muta play in and out, but those two the two doors that are popping right now, you know, say they're going to do the job themselves. Yeah, definitely. And the best part here, actually, honestly, is that he hasn't even seen the Thors yet. The Thors didn't actually have to show themselves. The missile turret scared the Mutas off, so our Zerg player doesn't actually know yet that he's just producing Thors now. He's double producing Thors. Um, or was anyway. And now he's producing siege tanks, but yeah, I'd like got... him to continue with the Thors. Honestly, Thor Hellbat is an amazing composition if your opponent's down on two base. Yeah, especially since we, you know, if if he was going Roach, I would disagree and say go siege tank. But obviously he's not, and he knows now he's gonna face Ling Muta. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no there's no real problem with going, you know, Thor Hellbat. Um, I really like the decision that Turin did there. He canceled the second, the uh, third, and fourth tour. Thor a little couple way into them, made some siege tanks just in case that Zerg was going to do any big crazy push on the ground. And now he's producing his Thors yeah, again to handle these mutas. Instantly restarted into uh, Thor production. So a good thing to do, um, he does have two turrets in his main, but not watching his mineral line. And of course mutas can go ahead and take out like they're doing right now. They can go ahead and, and take out a, a turret and or two and let them s recover. He's actually targeting the tech lab is a really good idea, but to leave a Thor or two at home with a couple of well-placed Widow Mines is a really good idea if you're going to go ahead and move out. Thors get a couple of shots off. Uh, I don't think they got any kills. No, they didn't kill any mutas, but... Things we are trying to do a run by. Yeah, yeah, a little bit of damage. Yeah. Not too bad. Try yeah, and I mean, that's, that's kind of what you have to do is you have to, uh, you know, pick your options where you can. So, obviously, throwing mutas into the main, lings into the third... That's a really natural reaction to this. Uh, one thing that I do notice is that we don't have um, blue flame on the way since the mutas were able to take out the uh, the tech labs on the factories, which is a big, you know, it's not it's not too big, especially since he's got a massive you know supply lead and was able to snipe that hatchery. So until the drones transfer over, he's going to have a massive economy lead. Um, you know, the the blue flame not a huge deal, especially since Hellion, uh, hellbats tend to make quick meals of lings anyway. But he's not going to go ahead and research that. I, I, I think he should go ahead and research Blue Flame because he has the, the minerals and he has the time and he might as well do it anyway. Yeah, definitely. It's always it's a big pack of mutas though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, but they're so grouped up. And if those ter if those stores had not hit that Overseer and hit the mutas instead, that could have been some pretty serious damage. I don't think we would have necessarily gotten too many of them. And muta regen rate is beautiful. Yeah, I think... But what you're trying to do more so than, you know, get like six or seven muta kills is actually, as a mech player, I don't mind if the Zerg player is wasting a lot of supply into mutas. I'm right. actually trying to just get hits so that he stops attacking me and I can right. go ahead and just push him off. Right, exactly. If he, if he has a lot of supply in mutas... You know, mutas take a long time to whittle down <laughs> mech armies. So, if I'm if I have my army on the other side of the map, uh, you know, I'm not I'm not necessarily worried about it. So I'm just trying to dissuade mutas from coming into my mineral lines just so that. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I do think he should get if he is you know he's building a lot of turrets. He if you've got the supply and time, he has a little uh, supply block that he just came out of right now. The Terran player, why not go ahead and get high stack auto tracking and, and and structure armor for your turrets? That way you're so secure. You know, um, there's there's no reason. Not, I think a lot of players get into this mindset, like I have to spend every resource efficiently. I have to have right. this or that. But you know, it's like a sensor tower here or there. In the end, you know, it, that information might pay off for you, or that upgrade, oh, yeah, that building absolutely. upgrade might pay and off. And those for upgrades, you. the the range for turrets is amazing. And then the armor against mutas is so good because it totally nullifies the bounce damage. It just brings it all down to one, basically. Meanwhile, the mutas are going to try and come into the main, and the turrets get one kill. Um, but like I said, yeah, he's able to just eat up those turrets. The turrets are, you know, notoriously weak. He is going to go ahead and push. Our Terran player is going to come up the ramp. We do have roaches out now, so that was the proper response to go away oh, from. Oh, those uh, roaches are in a playing. decent position. The siege tanks are going to siege up, though. Some of them are behind there on the ramp, though. They're not able to get their shots off, so I think they're going to mm, lose out in the end. We do have Hellbats attacking the third. A Ling run by happening at the Terran third. There's a lot of stuff going down. Oh, we have a bit of a lag, lag yeah, going on, but we're that. right back into it. We have four Thors going off on this pack of mutas right now, and PP we have a little by PP. It's a bit of lag, I think, that, is yeah. is what's happening. Uh, one yeah. thing that um, we we uh, did say at the beginning of the game is that Lullaby is actually from Brazil, so I'm assuming he's playing on that server. 
down there. It's still NA, but connections can be tricky, sons of bitches sometimes. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what we're experiencing right now. Looking at the um, fight that we are going to hop back into once this pause undoes. There's three Thors left. There's five, six Vikings on the in the air for our Terran players. So I think he's going to be able to deal with the Mulesks without too much issue. I might a lose a couple more of these Thors, though. A lot of people like to think that Vikings aren't the best idea if you're going to incorporate them into a mech army versus Zerg. But um, sometimes they actually work out really well because as we get into the game here, the Mutas, even though they're not doing it right now, will actually target the Vikings because it's the first thing that comes out and the Thors kind of chill in the back, allowing your Thors to get off an extra cruiser shots. Yeah, those Mutas, as we're watching them, are kind of disintegrating. Uh, yep. And they're going to get that last Thor, but they're going to die in the attempt. No, they're gonna, they're not gonna get that last door. Rather, they got the second to last door. Um, this These is three looking queens rough. are gonna come though. These three queens might be able to actually clean this up if those Vikings don't land. Roaches are gonna come out now as well, and wipe up the rest of what remains in terms yeah. of the main army. Yeah, he was able to clean that up. He lost a fourth, uh, and he actually took um, two essentially fourths at the same time. I I, I don't want to say he took a fourth and a fifth because I think he was kind of banking on losing one. The Zerg right. player was. We do have Definitely. a counterattack streaming across the map. Uh, the Vikings are seeing it coming. Uh, does he have enough to defend this? Zerg, that engagement went almost in favor of the Zerg player. I think he was able to turn around. If you look at the upgrades, we have 2-1 and 2-2. Two, two. No, rather, 2-1 versus 2-1, so oh, similar Lord, upgrades. Perfectly Landing. targeting the, the siege tank. The greatest decision. The Vikings do a lot of damage. They're basically hydrilisks when they're on the ground, and if those SCVs get us around on the Thor, they do. It's an infinite, it's an infinite Thor. Oh, <laughs> so much repair. It's the worst thing. Infinite, infinite Thor. And now in Legacy of the Void, the Thors just repair themselves. Perfect. Although they are out of <laughs> combat when they do. Yeah. Me. So I'll repair one Thor while my other Right, exactly. With the SCVs, <laughs> and then the other one can sit and do that. Yeah. yeah. As long as my That's SCVs right. can still repair my Thors. <laughs> oh, the real question is, can your SCVs repair the Thors that are repairing themselves? That's like a triple upgrade Thor I think it, repair. I honestly think it would take like two seconds to repair it fully. You're giving me uh, Terran dreams right now. I'm just yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm looking into the future when when ladder is going to be amazing. When I have a cyclone that can just defeat your entire army. Exactly. <laughs> Vipers you mean coming it's, up. It's going to be oh, good. We do have Vipers. Yeah, I think that's a really good decision. Um, Vipers are amazing against Mech in a way because simply, I mean, like if they if they if they have siege tanks, you just blinding cloud. If they have hellbats, you blinding cloud. If you have Thors, you can choose. You can be like, oh, I'm going to blinding cloud you. I'm going to abduct you. I'm going to do whatever I really feel like. So I agree with you. However, we've got ten Vikings on the field. Ah, uh, that's true. Why and, do you have to ruin my dreams? You know, I love Vipers as much as the next guy. <laughs> um, but you know, the what is the uh, the range on the abduct for for a Viper? Pretty long. I think it's like ten or eleven. Ten or eleven. So. Um, you know, those the Vikings really. It's just all, it comes down to kind of a positional thing because if you have Thor supporting in the back. And Vikings, he does have one Thor in his, two, th three Thors now in his army composition, rather. So that a lot rather prematurely. But um, if you have, you know, Vikings in front, Thors in back, and then you split your siege tanks, that's how you deal with Vipers. Um, but does he know that they're there is the thing? Because if Vipers come into an engagement where you just siege up your tanks, like you said, in a big clump, and then, oh, by the way, you have, you siege tanks can't shoot because they can't see anything. Right. That's where the real benefits like come this. out. He's going to go ahead and try and walk by, but I think there's so many Hellbats here, and if these Hellbats get a dude around, oh, there's so many Siege Tanks, though. He does have Walking into tanks. this, scary, scary, scary. Yeah, I mean, okay, so say he does do a lot of damage to the mineral lines, which he hasn't really got into yet, and he loses his main force of roaches, you're relying on the flexibility of the roach army, to, or the, the Zerg army, to re-up rather quickly and efficiently due to, you right. know, larva. Um... But we've got more supply favor in terms of, well, actually, no, it's it's dropping now. The <laughs> supply's all over the place. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So far. It was just in favor of the Terran, now it's in favor of the Zerg, and now it's in favor of the Terran again. Uh, and all, all in all, that, that engagement just kind of, I don't know, even the game up? Made it a little, just chill for a little bit? Yeah, I think I think now it's kind of a, a point where both of the players can just like sit back and like take a good... 10, 20 seconds to think about what they really want to do here. Blinding Cloud goes down on these tanks. He's going to go ahead and go in and engage here. Not sure if he really wants to engage into this oh, massive army that he didn't notice. Viper does go down. Um, he's going to take out two of the tanks. Two tanks for that many roaches? And a Viper? Yeah, not worth it. The Viper, that that's your, you know, expensive unit in the army. You want to keep those things alive as long as possible. You want to keep their yeah, energy up. You're not trying to lose a, a, lose a Viper cheaply like that. 200 gas spellcaster. Never something you want to lose. Yeah, that's a 
it's your Raven equivalent, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, so we do have five bases for Zerg. He's mined out the main, uh, and he's going to go ahead and send drones over. But we do have Vikings, and they know that that's there. Uh, Roach attack, counterattack again, going to come up into the natural. How do you feel about these counterattacks? It's good. Is is right now? It's really all the, the Zerg player can be doing because he needs to take his that fifth that left fourth base or fifth base or whatever. Um, he needs to saturate it. He needs three base mineral income to even be close to be able to deal with what uh, Terran has in terms honestly, of his army. Honestly, if I'm Terran, I'm doing exactly what Lullaby's doing right now. I'm saying, you know what? You don't have the army to deal with me one on one. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and take out your your expansions. Uh, okay, I'm gonna lift a couple of buildings if I have to base race. I'm right. gonna use my reinforcements. Uh, you know, I might have to lose one base or, you know, take away saturation from one base, but you can't deal with this army that I have. And that's so di that's a difficult decision to make for Terran. Let's not, you know, mm -hmm. let's not take that away from him because you're being pulled left and right. It's almost, Mech is almost like playing Protoss in a way. You, you've mm -hmm. spent this really long time making sure you get an army composition that's good and strong, and you, you're pulling left and right because it's the immobility that the Roaches are exploiting. Funnily enough, the Roaches are exploiting immobility. Um, yeah, definitely. And so he's made the decision now, you know, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to push you, and you're either going to have to retreat or base trade me, and Terran favors the base trade because you can float. Yeah, and that's a good decision. The only, the, I mean, the only way this, this fight's going to go in favor of the Zerg is if Terran pushes up this ramp and doesn't bring his siege tanks, if he leaves them down there. And then those roaches might be able to get a pretty good concave on the Hellbat and the Thor, which they kind of eat through. Uh, but siege tanks are slowly leapfrogging their way up the ramp, and I think Terran's going to be able to take this pretty solidly. Yeah, yeah, Giant Gnome is relying on this last Zerg push to kind of free him up. This is the final days of uh, of Berlin, though. This is not going to work out too well for him. Um, Hitler's in his bunker committing suicide right now with his girlfriend. <laughs> um, the, days of national, still, yeah. the days of national socialism are over. He's hiding his overlords in the bottom corner, or the back top left corner of the map. Um, those doors are, you know... He's going to target on the Thors and hope that the Mutas can counter. Yeah, there, but there's, um, you know, all the Vikings are landing. Uh-oh. There's Mutas coming, Viking. That's have okay. I, he I, he I, has to focus the Thors first, and the Vikings will have time to lift. Well, he's got one Thor. Oh, no, he's got two Thors, he's rather. Got two Thors. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that was that was a little bit of a of a catch-your-breath moment. Um, it almost could have worked it out. It could have happened. Um, but he's only, happened. Got, he's only got, you know, how many Mutas does he have? Fifteen. Only, yeah, fifteen Mutas. Not going to... And he's losing them. It's not a good day when you have enough Vikings to deal with a Muta Ball. Like, that should never happen. Uh, so this is pretty much GG at this point. I don't want to under-hype it. Um, he is running around with this Muta Ball, doing some last-ditch efforts, trying to, to revitalize himself. Um, funnily enough, the Terran player didn't snipe the spawning pool uh, in the main, which you should do. You should never leave leave tech behind if you're playing versus Zerg because you want to force them to, to right. waste a drone. Especially like, okay, so Lullaby's got this game one in my obviously. But yeah. um, if you're if you don't know if you have the advantage and if you're you know, maybe base racing and you leave a spawning pool open, that's an extra oh, drone yeah. at a base. Get rid of, get rid of that spawning pool. Yeah, right away. get rid of all the tech that you know, I don't know if he if he just thought, Oh I'm so far ahead I don't even have to worry about mm -hmm. it. Um, and he did get rid of the only units that would you know, he got rid of the Roach Warren and the other tech, the the Spire and things like that. Yeah. At oh, this point, Terran uh, Doom dropped me. Did not notice he sniped my spawning pool, and I had to hold his push with 140 drones. But you held. Yeah, of course. But it's 140 drones. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why Zerg don't just make a bunch of drones and then just <laughs> aim. It. Right. Um, one thing though, I think this is a little bit um, just them being in the same team. There we go. He G called GG. He had a bunch of hatcheries all over the map.